Hello, and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench, we have a BG7TBL 10 megahertz reference standard GPSDO. These are uh, easily acquired from typical auction sites, things like that. And I had a viewer request to specifically do this module right here. We've tested another one too with stability analysis which we're also going to put this unit through. I have a GPSDO that ties to a rubidium unit in the lab for stability because I have to align. Sometimes I have to align calibration equipment, things like that, so I need some very stable clocks, and that's about as stable as I can get. Cost reasonable. Um, reasonable, when I say that, is relative. These are relatively inexpensive. Um, these hit between the $70 and $150 price point um, US. A hydrogen maser hits at the $150,000 price point. I do not have one of those <laughs> for obvious reasons. So doing the GPSDO into a rubidium unit, it's the highest precision at, the reason, at, at reasonable expense. There is a several orders of magnitude step up in cost if um, if I go up from here. I probably won't need to, so I'm set and I'm done for a while. But um, because we have the rubidium, I can do analysis on the GPSDOs, and that's what a viewer requested, because you need a more stable... Because this is a fairly stable clock, so to do an analysis on it, you need a more stable clock which is one of the reasons why it took so long to get this video out. This video was requested quite some time ago. What we're going to do is we're going to hook this up. I've got the frequency counter warming up. We'll run it through its analysis, get some numbers. I've started a spreadsheet for model numbers to keep track of. And um, we'll also take a look at the, um, the output of this on the spectrum analyzer see how good the oscillator is, and we'll take a look at it on a scope. So we'll get the, we'll get going and get some stuff done. The other unit that I've done a video on, in this case, is the TM4313. Um, that one hit around the $90 price point. This one hit around the $150 price point. So we'll see how they compare and go from there. Okay, so turns out, Looks like this one is a little bit more harmonically rich. So we have a 16.3 dBm signal at 10 megahertz at 20, which is the first harmonic. Negative 19.2 and negative 44.3 for the third harmonic. Not awful, but a little bit of harmonic content in the signal. Well, a couple of things on this one. Now we have a span of 20 kilohertz and a 10 megahertz center. But it looks like, I don't know, it's the highest right at 10, 10 megahertz. It looked, because I was off a little bit, it looked like it was slightly off frequency. But uh, not 16.3 dBm. At, uh, it's a little off, but we'll see what the frequency counter says. Spectrum analyzers, especially of this vintage, are not good frequency or highly accurate frequency measurement devices. That's the realm of counters. Um, they do a pretty good job, but their internal clocks move a bit. This one is hooked up to the rubidium, so we're getting the best we can. But it also doesn't look like it's symmetric. Yeah, we're a little higher over here down in the noise. So it almost looks like the sweeping, or the, uh, so in this regard, the TM4313 did a little bit better. Hopefully the uh, BG does better in the stability department. It's walking around pretty good. So we have a gate time of 10 milliseconds, and we're going to turn on the statistics. Uh, we're going to do stats on. And we're going to set trigger to manual. So we're going to do 100 samples, different gate times, 
That's how we're going to come up with the numbers. So we're going to hit trigger. Go back to math, statistics. We have a 2.261 millihertz Allen deviation at high speed, which isn't too much of a problem. We'll just get this recorded here real quick. Uh, and our peak-to-peak -peak variance is 13 millihertz. So it's actually looking a little bit better than the TM. Okay, we need to take our gate, or er, yes, gate time, and we need to bump that to 100 milliseconds. Reset the stats, and trigger. All the equipment did go through the proper warm-ups. Allen variance. Now we're down to the microhertz. A little bit worse. All right, next up we have a gate time of one second. Trigger, math, stats. Now, because we're doing 100 samples, this is going to take 100 seconds. Getting there, 88. You can see the sample count here. Allen deviation as it's moving and coming down. And there we go. Ooh, that does a little bit better than the uh, TM. Okay, this is about to get exponentially longer with 10, with 10 seconds and 100 seconds of gate time. 10 seconds is gonna be about two and a half minutes. 100 seconds, it's going to be two and a half hours. So, actually, no, I think 10 seconds is 25 minutes, and then it's two and a half hours. So, I will wait that out while the counter is counting, and through the speed of camera, you guys will find out the results in a moment. Okay, some interesting stuff in the numbers, which we'll get to in a little bit, but for now, let's get this thing unhooked, and we will take a look at the inside one of the things to note with both of these units if you do end up picking one up I would get a better power pack for them uh, the more stable power we can give these units the less hard they have to work at being stable so it can only improve also a good power pack would be important because one of the things one of the use cases for these is they sit and run 24-7 and just stay warmed up and powered on. So having a good power supply, especially if it's going to stay plugged in all the time, is uh, definitely preferable. Okay, some pluses on the uh, BG-7 as opposed to the TM-443. We do have BNC ports on the front, so you, you do not need adapters to go from... SMA to BNC. Nice case. Gets a little warm. Nothing overly 
Nothing overly hot. This is not a standard serial port. It's got some funny pinouts because it's got, um, on pin 8, it's got the one pulse per second that comes off of that. So we do have a DB9 on this unit that we don't have on the other one. And uh, might be able to be read by some software like Lady Heather or something like that. So here we go. Looks like we have a little bit of a battery in there. And battery one, much smaller than the footprint. We have a lot of stuff on the bottom of this. GPS module will be here. It has been etched off. There's no data on that whatsoever. Um, antenna just comes in from the front panel. This is going to be the uh, crystal oscillator. It's a CTS part. So this linear LT part, this is a 2.5 volt regulator. Uh, quite a beefy one, actually, three amps. Um, the crystal was a bit warm, so might be ovenized and insulated. An Altera Max 2 on the bottom. This is going, this chip's going to be uh, serial buffering, or buffering for the serial port. In isolation, probably. Looks like U9 is an Atmel part number. Wouldn't be surprised if that was the control micro. But all in all, not bad. I'm curious what the battery's for. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, maybe somebody in the comments knows. Nice shielded box. So all in all, not a bad run. Just throw the put this all back together here real quick. And we do get 10 megahertz out and one pulse per second out. Which is fairly typical. I'll get this put back together and we'll look at the numbers. Okay, here's our data chart starting to fill out at uh, point one or point oh one. We'll zoom in. The TM4313 is on the top and the BG7TBL is on the bottom, so we have a slight improvement, nothing too crazy, uh, at point 0.1. At 1, slight improvement, nothing, nothing to write home about. One second gate time, almost the same, very close. Ten second gate time, it gets a little interesting. There's a drastic improvement at the 10 second interval over the um, on the BG over the uh, TM. However, at the 100 second gate time, it looks a little weird. It looks a little weird, but we get some interesting information. So between the two, what this data is telling me, because we have a peak to peak at 100 samples of 1.6 millihertz versus 617 microhertz. But we have a ADEV, uh, an ADEV that's a lot better. So this is a um, Allen deviation. So what this is telling me is on the BG7TBL, the oscillator swinging more peak to peak but it's swinging less. So when it does swing, it swings in a bigger scale, but it doesn't, but it's not swinging as often as the uh, PLL servos and tries to bring it back to 10 megahertz. On the TM4313, we're swinging less, but we're swinging more often. So even though I have a bigger, a less peak to peak deviation, we have a higher ADEV because it's servoing more often. That's at least how I'm interpreting the data to get started. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and we will all learn together. Uh, both of the oscillators did have a 24-hour warm-up time, so they were sitting on and running on the bench for 24 hours or longer before these measurements were taken, so to give it the best stability as it could. And where I'm sitting, they see roughly... 11 satellites, at least that's what my uh, NTP server says. As of right now, at the time of this recording, both of these oscillators are available if anybody would like to add them to their own personal lab. 
Um, and they will be available until they're spoken for. I don't see any reason to need more than one GPSDO, even though I have two, because uh, I do have a, um, a uh, Leo's GPSDO that does not have a one pulse per second output for dialable sine and square waves out of the BNCs. So, so thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at the BG7 TBL 10 megahertz reference. As people request more 10, 10 megahertz stuff, we'll do some more videos on this. Um, a lot of the videos on the channel are viewer driven, so leave me comments, leave me questions, and if enough people leave me comments or questions, we'll get some things in front of the camera and make a video about it. In between videos, I hang out in the comments section with all of you guys and check out the Patreon page. They are sitting around four videos ahead at the moment. So everything that's up on Patreon, there's nothing behind a paywall. It will all make it to YouTube at some point, but they're running about a month ahead on videos. So if you'd like more content from me, check that out as well. And I do enjoy all the conversation that happens between me and the patrons and me and the viewers of the channel in the comment section. So definitely drop me a line and let me know. Hit like, subscribe, and all the YouTube buttons to get this video pushed out to as many people as we can. As always, more is on the way, and I will see everybody in the next video.